<laughs> so in that case, if you suspend payments, then doesn't that break down the model? Um, you know, you don't have a lender of last resort, or, a, or sorry, like a, a, like your value investor, right? It has a backstop. So then doesn't that, like, even if the sterling is still an international currency, doesn't it get strongly devalued, or is that? Is there okay, so well, there's sort of two, two questions there. Um, the, first, the first is, really not so much a question as an observation, that once you suspend specie payments, Okay, my little story here, okay, about mint par ratios and, and, and these sort of outside spread, it sort of all goes away. Okay, that's exactly right. It does all go away. Okay. And what that raises then is, well, what is the story then? Okay, if that goes away, it doesn't mean that it's not replaced by something, and that's what we're going to talk about next, next time, as a matter of fact. But, but yes, it's true that this story of where exchange rates come from no longer works. That's right. And the second question you had uh, was, um, and wouldn't therefore the pound sterling just uh, depreciate? Okay. Well, careful. Depreciate. Depreciate against what? Okay. Depreciate against other currencies, against gold, certainly. Against gold, certainly. That's clear. But it may well still be the best currency in the world. Okay, and so it's not clear necessarily that it depreciates against other currencies. It will, all currencies, the currency system will depreciate against gold, possibly, in a situation like this. But maybe not, not sterling. This is somewhat counterintuitive, okay, um, but we're going to see this next time, okay. There's actually some economics of this. What I want to observe as a way of preparing you for next time, okay, is how this gold standard system works. Look, look, at, look, at, look at what we got here. We got gold points. Okay. There's a specific outside spread caused by the gold points, and that is creating bounds that is giving the dealers room to work in, okay. that they can make a market inside these gold points. Okay. We got another outside spread here, bank rate created by the, the central bank that gives the private banking system a range to work in, that they're willing to discount bills because they know there's a backstop here. Okay? So when we're, when we're moving away from the gold standard, we're moving away from both of those things. These are the things, I mean, you, you pointed out this one, okay, this one is gone. And so we no longer can tell this story anymore about the determination of exchange rates. But typically, this one is gone too. This bank rate, okay, is a discount rate for 90-day bills, right? That's not what we have today, right? With the Fed sets the overnight interest rate, the Fed funds rate, okay? It doesn't set 90-day bill prices, okay? Maybe in a crisis it might do something like that, and we talked about that during the crisis, how it walked up the yield curve, how it's tried to set, set funding rates, and then that didn't work, and it tried to stabilize mortgage-backed security prices and walking, walking up the... But in general, in normal times, it's just setting the overnight interest rate. So that can't really be our story about how, how the world works. So this backstop, this explicit backstop that was there in the 19th century is not there today. Okay. So we're going to have to have a different story for this as well. Okay. Both, of these, both of these diagrams you will see we're going to use next time, but they're going to be different. The outside spreads are not going to be central banks. This is a central bank spread. This is the central bank setting this goal point and, and defending this goal point. This is a central bank setting this bank rate here and defending that, creating the outside spread. Okay. That's not going to be uh, so necessarily when you're, in, in, when you're not in the gold standard. What, maybe this is sort of meta course talk. Okay. I've tried to find a way, the whole point of this lecture is to, get, is to use the apparatus that we know, this dealer model, to explain how the gold standard worked, to prepare you for next time. Usually, the gold standard is not explained using, the, using this apparatus. Usually it's not. And so you might say, well, why is he going around? I saw it really was very nicely explained in some previous course. Well, but that would then not extend to the case where you had fiat money or you're, you're, you don't have. So this model does extend, okay? This is the point, is to start to build some intuition 
that we can think that once you go off gold, it doesn't mean that suddenly you're in la-la land and there's no economics. No, it's not. Okay, you're not. This, this structure still works. In 1923, okay, wrote a tract on monetary reform. This was uh, not his first book, his, but his first real money book. Um, 1923, what's going on? Okay, this is after World War I. The gold standard sort of fell apart. You remember from last time in the, in the war, only the U.S. stayed on gold. The various countries are trying to get back to gold. Maybe they're trying to develop this gold exchange standard thing. And what is Keynes writing as a young man, 1923? He says, here on page 172, in truth, the gold standard is already a barbarous relic. All of us, from the governor of the Bank of England downwards, are now primarily interested in preserving the stability of business, prices, and employment, and are not likely, when the choice is forced on us, deliberately to sacrifice these to the outworn dogma, which had its value once, of three pounds, 17 shillings, 10 and a half pence per ounce. Okay, that's, that's this here, okay, outworn dogma. Advocates of the ancient standard do not observe how remote it now is from the spirit and the requirements of the age. A regulated, non-metallic standard has slipped in unnoticed. It exists. While the economist dozed, the academic dream of a hundred years, doffing its cap and gown clad in paper rags, has crept into the real world by means of the bad fairies, always so much more potent than the good, the wicked ministers of finance. Okay. What is he saying there? This is poetic Keynes language. He's saying there war finance. War finance has gotten us used to paper money, okay, that is not backed by gold. And we've learned that we, and we're not going back to the gold standard, which is disciplining us, forcing us to raise bank rate, you know, when we don't want to. And it, and it affects un employment in our country. We, we, we're gonna, the future lies in having every individual central bank, this is what Keynes is arguing here, focus just on stabilizing prices in their own country, okay? And then let exchange rates fluctuate freely, okay? Uh, depending on that. So he depends, he, he's, he's making the economist's argument. If we stabilize prices, then somehow through purchasing power parity, we're gonna stabilize exchange rates, okay? That's the hope of this book. It's a very monetarist book, this book, the first one. Um, this was his hope. It didn't work. It didn't actually work. It didn't, it, first of all, we didn't do this. Okay, we tried to get back on the gold standard and then it all broke apart and we had world depression. Um, but this is what, what Mundell was talking about, this dream that Keynes had in 1923 of, of given that the finance ministers and, and, and the politicians are not willing to subordinate their economies to the dictates of the gold standard, what is gonna, how's this gonna work? How's this gonna work? And this is Keynes' hope. He's saying, maybe if we just focus on stabilizing price levels, we can let exchange rates float and we can live in that world, okay? But how is that world gonna work? And he starts to talk about forward exchange and things like that. It's not all that worked out here, okay? Because it's still a very monetarist kind of story there. Um, but it's, this is where, in, in, this, uh, in this book, A Tract on Monetary Reform, um, he, he writes an equation that is equivalent to our covered interest parity equation, which I'll write here just to remind you what it is. Um, uh, equals one plus R. Okay. Spot exchange rate, forward exchange rate, term rate of interest, term rate of interest, okay. Um, this is covered interest parity, okay. This is gonna be the key relationship to, that we're going to use next time when we translate, when we start to think, well, what version of that diagram is appropriate in a world without the gold standard? And where's the outside spread gonna come from? And what version of that diagram is appropriate in a world of, of, of without the gold standard? Um, what's on the axes and so forth? It's going to be covered interest parity that is going to be helping us do that translation.